Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a PS1 game, and that happens to be Lucifer Ring. And this game was developed by Soft Machine. You know, this brings up a good question. Does that mean that the machine that they used to develop this game happened to be made out of memory foam? Well, with all the stupid shit aside, it's, yeah, it's developed by Soft Machine, and it was published by Toshiba EMI and it was released in 1998 in Japan only. Although, it is available on the PS3's PSN, and yes, even in the North American servers, it is on there, so woot for that. And it's a 3D beat-em-up hack and slash. So, first things first, let's talk about the story. So, in this world, there is a dark shadow looming all over the world, and the only way to stop it is that you have to collect four rings. I guess you can say they are the Lucifer rings that you gotta collect, and you're using the hero named Nash, who kinda looks like a mix between darts from Legend of Dragoon and uh, Edol from the East games. And yeah, that's really all you need to know about the story in this game, you just gotta get rings, stop evil bad guy, big bang, do boom, you're done. And also the very few texts that are in this game are all in Japanese too, so that doesn't really help matters much, but either way, it's pretty obvious that it's a beat-em-up that's more focused on the gameplay. So let's talk about that. So as I said before, this pretty much plays like a 3D beat-em-up, very similar to games like Golden Axe, where whenever you run into a bunch of enemies, you have to fight them all in a forest field, and once you clear out all the enemies, then it's just move on to the next area. And while walking around, you can find some treasure chests where you can find some various items, whether it be power upgrades or even some health. But it is important to know that all the power-ups in this game are different elements for your sword, whether it be like a fire sword, a thunder sword, or an ice sword. And as you would suspect, they all have different effects on certain enemies. But here's the real important thing to know is that sometimes in these treasure chests, they'd like to fuck with you by trying to put the regular sword back in one of them, so therefore taking away your awesome-powered swords. Yeah, it's very much like a Ghost and Goblins sort of deal. And other than the enemies trying to attack you, of course, there is many obstacles you gotta avoid, such as falling rocks, traps, and even some pitfalls. Yes, this game does have some light platforming elements. And throughout the levels, there are many bosses to fight before fighting the bigger boss. And there are some areas within the levels where you can actually take an alternate pathway to get to the same point. And the alternate pathway could be different where it could have some different items to pick up or even fighting some different enemies. And of course different obstacles to avoid. So that sums up everything you need to know about the gameplay. So now let's get moving on to the controls. And the controls in this one are actually pretty decent. So the button layout is very easy to understand. So you know you can jump, you can do a light attack, you can do a heavy attack. And of course you can also do a combination of the two attacks and do a combo set. And you can do a magic attack once your meter is full. And the feel of the general attacking in this game does feel pretty good, even though the, uh, the stronger attack does feel a little bit slow, but I guess that makes sense since, you know, it is a stronger attack. And as for walking around in this game, it is also pretty good, but I will say that it is highly recommended that you do play this in analog mode, because if you're playing this with a D-pad, then you're going to have a bad time because playing with a D-pad is so stiff that it's frustrating. So playing with the analog is just the way to go, it's just easier to move around in all directions. But if there is one thing about the walking in this game that still doesn't feel right, even in analog mode, is that the running in this game is a little bit unresponsive. Though thankfully you don't need to run most of the time, but it's still kind of annoying. Because you gotta tap the direction twice, but sometimes, like I said, it's just not as responsive as you'd think it would be. But other than that one thing, everything else about the controls are pretty good and which is why I consider them to be pretty decent for the most part. So now let's get moving on to the other things like the graphics. And the graphics for this one actually do look pretty good for PS1 standards. Like the game does have a lot of good colors but it also does suit with the dark fantasy setting which I think is really great. And all the character designs are really nicely done too. So I do like the way that the main character looks, sure he may not be like the most outstanding looking character ever, but I do like the fact that, you know, like I said before, that he kind of looks like a mix between darts and uh, Adol. And all the monster and boss designs are all pretty great looking. And you get a lot of variety when it comes to the different monsters that you get to fight, and of course all the bosses and mini bosses as well. And all the overall level designs are nicely done too. And having the alternate pathways really helps that out too. 
But however, the final stage within the game, they got kind of lazy with it, which is kind of unfortunate, but otherwise, all the other levels in the game are actually pretty well done when it comes to the level designs. So for a 3D beat-em-up, I still think this is a pretty good looking one for PS1. Oh, and one other thing that also helps get this game to be kind of intriguing for me is that the cover art for the game just looks pretty badass looking. So now, when it comes to the game's music, sadly to say, the music in this one is the weakest part. And there's three big reasons for that. So the first one is that a lot of songs here are very forgettable. I can't remember anything about the songs. And then if the songs are not forgettable, they are uh, very crappy sounding. So there's your second reason. And the third reason is that uh, a lot of the songs don't even suit the appropriate area where they belong to. For an example, you get to fight a dude named Lars who happens to have a sword and you just get to fight to the death and such, but yet, you get to have some pretty shitty music going on in the background. It's really disappointing. The only song within the game that I can say that I kinda liked was the song that plays within the first stage. And even then, it's really not all that great, but it's at least better than everything else in the game. And you know, for a game called Lucifer Ring, they really should have had some like metal music within the game, I mean at least that would have been pretty badass. But sadly, the music just had to suck compared to everything else within the game. So now, if you want to buy this game, I've only seen three copies of it on eBay, and the two copies that we have here are one for $7.84 and uh, $16.80. How very specific. So it's good to know that this game is actually very cheap, but sadly the third copy that's being sold on here is not even sealed at all or anything and it's selling for $820, but I just say fuck that guy, he's probably a meth head. But that's just if you want to get an original copy, which is only in Japan, so therefore you have to have a Japanese PS1 or if you have your PS1 modded or anything like that. And probably the easiest way if you want to buy this game is that you can always go on the North American PSN store, look in the import section of PS1 games, and you can find it there for $5.99. Which, if I say so myself, that is very well worth it. And it's pretty awesome that we actually got an obscure game like this on PS3's PSN. Now only if we ever got LSD Dream Emulator on there, goddammit. But that's another discussion for another day. But yes, it is very nice that this game is very easy access. So now, as for my overall thoughts on this game, this is actually a pretty enjoyable beat-em-up if I say so myself. So I really like the style of the game, I also like the way that the levels are done, excluding the final level of course. I also like the challenge that this game has, because this game can also be pretty tough, especially if you're playing on normal mode or higher. The boss battles are pretty fun, even the platforming parts are not too pain in the ass. And finally, most importantly, this game just feels like a pretty enjoyable, mindless, fun beat-em-up. Which is to be expected from the genre, because really, I mean, do we have to have, like, 30 minute cutscenes between, like, every fight that goes on within this game? Of course not. But just for the way how this game turned out, I am pretty happy with it, but of course, like I said, it's very recommended that you play it with the analog control, because if you play with a D-pad, then this game is just gonna be a very frustrating nightmare. But otherwise, I find this game is at the very least worth checking out. Obviously, it's not the best beat-em-up that you'll ever play, but it definitely has a really cool style to it, and it's just overall a pretty fun one. And thankfully, this game is also a very easy access right now, mostly because of PSN, and of course, there's also emulation out there, and even if you want to get yourself an original copy, if you can play them, then at least the games are actually uh, pretty cheap. So yeah, Lucifer Ring is a pretty good game, it's just unfortunate the music kind of sucks, but otherwise, if you just want a pretty good, uh, mindless, fun action beat-em-up, then I would recommend checking this one out. So with that being said, that will end this review here, so thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.